Hello, hello, Bana Patata. My oh, name. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is 4 p.m. on Tuesday afternoon. That means it is time for Joystick Streams. My name is Anthony John Agnello. Uh, I am the community manager at joystick.com and your ever loving host here on Joystick Streams. Joining us today uh, from Spain. Isn't that right, Jordy? Yeah, from Spain. Uh, we have Jordi Tapaka uh, from Deconstruct Team, the studio behind a very, very upsetting, in the best way upsetting, <laughs> adventure game called Gods Will Be Watching. Uh, Gods Will Be Watching started its life uh, as, a, as a Ludum Dare game jam game and has since gone into development on uh, PC and mobile devices. Isn't that right, Jordy? Yeah, first we'll, we will release the PC version and later we'll be developing the mobile devices port. Got so, it. Very cool. And Jess, you have some familiarity. We are also joined by Jess Condit, senior reporter from joystick.com, who is going to be playing today. Uh, Raven Shield asks, will there be kneecapping? Yes! <laughs> of course! <laughs> Duh! Um, uh, Jordy, yeah. there, there is no small amount of violence in Gods Will Be Watching, isn't that true? Uh, as long as you want to make that. I mean, there's as much violence as, as you want. Yes. Okay. Well, here, uh, here's my first choice in the game, though. Should I play on oh, original yeah. or easy? Um, I've, um, I've played yeah, original yeah, well, a bit. <laughs> But I'm not very good. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be more fun if you play original because we, we call it that way, not hard or easy because we wanted the player to feel insulted. Like, this is the way we want you to play the game. Oh. And this is the way just to enjoy the story in case you don't want to face some real challenges. Very nice. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. Uh, Jordy, could you explain the background of Gods Will Be Watching for everyone? Background, you mean the like the backstory of the game? Yes. Yeah, so God's Will Be Watching is some dystopic sci-fi adventure and it's based on the life of, of Sergeant Burden. It's the main character here. You can see it on the middle of the campfire. Sergeant Burden is this guy right in the middle with the brown coat on, right? Yeah, that's one. And um, the game is not uh, linear storytelling, it's about seven years in the life of this man and you get to see difficult situations he has to endure and it's some kind of flash forwards and flashbacks to see the, the complete story. So yeah, and we set it on a dystopic sci-fi environment because we, we just wanted to open the boundaries of creativity and not just be tied to something like this is real future or real science fiction is like whatever mechanism we need for storytelling we can add it here and as you can see there are some it's in the future but they are dressed like normal people maybe the 80s or the 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 90s i don't know yes uh, normal normal clothes nothing very sci-fi but they're, yeah, not, they're, they're not ridiculous like star trek outfits <laughs> yeah, right, exactly yeah. yeah they're just normal people on an alien planet uh, so, Jordy, is part of the game finding out why they're on this alien planet? How did Sergeant Burden get stranded here? Yeah, actually, this was this um, specific stage is the one we developed for the game Jam, the one we made originally in a weekend. And all the story of the game, we built it around how the team starts here. Actually, you begin the game seeing this campfire scene. And then the storytelling goes back like one year ago and you played several stages until you see how the team ends in here. And yeah, this is actually chapter number four of the game. Oh, oh, oh my, I didn't realize that. Yep. Very cool. I actually have a question about the name of the game. Um, yeah. It's Gods Will Be Watching. Is there a reason it's not Gods Are Watching? Or, I mean, that, that phrasing is so, yeah. it's, it's very grabbing. Like, it grabs you, like, oh, they will be. Why? Why will they be? Oh. Why aren't they now? 
You know, I, I could make a fancy story about the game, but actually it's because we don't know a lot of English. Oh. <laughs> and, and being that way, that way. In, español, in Spanish, it will be like, los dioses estarán mirando, and we yeah. try to do that, but it ended up like being epic without trying. Okay. I mean, that's a, a good enough answer for me. I like it. Yeah. Jor <laughs> Jordi, let me say that for an accidental cool sounding english name it is awesome it's a really cool right. name yeah. <laughs> yeah thank you there's it tension is, in it it's cool it is instantly striking i had never heard of gods will be watching until this past february when jess and uh alexander uh joystick's news content director who was on the call before uh both were like we should stream this we should absolutely stream this in the near future and I was nice. like, I don't know what you're talking about, but the fact that it is called Gods Will Be Watching, I automatically want to know what you were talking yeah. about. Yeah, it, it was some kind of accident, but actually on this game, we we saw that in the original prototype, that just the title of the game affected the gameplay, and we liked it that so much. Like, why the gods? Why are they watching? Actually, they don't appear in the game, but yeah, we like how it affects how do you play, just knowing how the game is called. So in that aspect, we try to empower that that kind of feeling in, in the remake. Mm. Uh, a question for you from the chat here, Jordi. Uh, yeah. Cirrus654 wants to know how long uh, Gods Will Be Watching has been in development. Now, you said this stage that we're playing, which is chapter four in the full yep. game, is what you made in a weekend in a game jam. But, yeah. <laughs> but how long has the full game been in development at this point? Okay, yeah, this stage uh, is based on the original prototype, but actually has been fully remade and has been, we put like a month of effort just doing this stage. And just after we finish the game jam, and we see that the, the game gets a lot of attention from the public and the press, and. We didn't suspect it's what it was going to be so successful. So I I think it's been like a year in development now. Actually, this weekend got to be watching uh, made one year because this Ludum there was just one year ago when got to be watching was born. So it's one year old now. Um, yeah, developing it, uh, working on it, like programming. It's been since August, but thinking of the ideas and developing the plot and the game design, it's been for a year now, exactly a year. Mm. Jess, why don't you walk us through what you're doing at this point? Yeah. Because um, it's, it's, it's very, the action in Gods we've watching is very subtle and mm -hmm. deeply disturbing. Like, it, you know, when the dialogue options come up, when you highlight one of these characters, it says, talk to them or, you know, repair the droid, or destroy people. <laughs> or kill. On or every kill. character, one of the options is kill. Um, which I find lovely. Um, <laughs> but, but it's just, it's so strange. It's different than like, yeah, you, know, you play a giant sandbox game like Grand Theft Auto, and you know that you can just walk up to somebody on the street and bludgeon them in the head, and you have that option. But to actually see the word kill on yeah. the screen is is really intimidating. It evokes some really, really strong feelings. It's very it's very blunt, and maybe part of that is the language barrier, but it's working in the game's favor here. Um, because it is just so like so kind of pared down, like you could repair the radio or you can kill this person. Like these are your options right now. Um, and yep. and that seems to be like the underlying tone of this game. Um, I have to keep I have to try to keep as many people alive as possible right now in this scenario, and uh, and I have to click on them and decide what they're going to do for the day. Um, and basically, they can go mad very easily and run away or or turn evil in various in various ways. Um, and so I have to manage my food. I have to manage my personnel. I have to fix the radio before what 23 days runs out. I'm pretty sure. Yep. Um, otherwise, we're trapped on this this planet forever. Um, it's it's a lot to manage, and uh, and then there's a virus that's gonna kill us all too if this doctor doesn't prepare enough antidotes for us. 
Um, so it's a lot of things to manage. Uh, and it's, it's very fun, it's very tricky. I've never gotten a perfect run through. Uh, I've never made it with everyone alive at the end. So that's uh, cool. <laughs> way to indict your own leadership skills, Jess. <laughs> Not I tried. Really. I tried. Uh, another question here from the chat. Raven Shield would like to know: Is the robot sleeping, yeah. or is it deactivated? It's um, because some things that happened before in the story. His battery systems get damaged, so he just can be activated with the light of the sun. So when it gets too dark, the, the robot goes in a sleep mode until the next day. Jordy, I do wonder, why is the robot wearing a formal suit? <laughs> I love that he's wearing a formal suit, <laughs> but... I mean, why, why not? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, if I was going to be stranded on an alien world with a robot, I'd want him to be classy. I'd want him to have, like, some nice style. Yeah, it, actually, in the story, they gave background for Brandon, and it's a custom project from the engineer. Uh, he was a, like some kind of social empathic robot. He was designed to be at parties or at uh, home with uh, his host and make him feel comfortable. And he just grabbed one of these like battler robots or empathic robots and modified it to give reading some performance and mood of the team. So it's uh, the way you can know with a number how are the players feeling. It was like some mechanic device of game design to tell the player a number without breaking the, the context of the game. Mm. And since it has the backstory, why not a suit? Jordy, what drew you and the, the rest of the Deconstruct team crew to telling a survival story? Why did you want to make something that was, I mean, you know, really bleak? Yeah, uh, the story in, like in Game Jams, it was, at the beginning we were trying to do a different concept of game. Um, we spent like seven or maybe eight hours of our time trying to make another type of game. We weren't doing what we watching at the beginning of the game jam, but we didn't feel it was good enough. And from the this kind of pressure, we, it wasn't planned uh, mm. at all. We were uh, with a lot of pressure and suddenly just trying to avoid the, the catastrophe. This concept came to my mind. Like I didn't plan anything. Like, it was like my subconscious was don't do that shit. Here you are a good, a good game concept. Develop this. So I would like to have an interesting story of how I decided to make this big story. But actually, was was my subconscious making like, here, here you are. Develop this. Um, I don't know. It, it was pretty straight. It was like the full package came to me without having to think a lot of it. I, I, I had uh, this image of the snow and the characters and the things you have to do just in one second, and it was like. Everybody stop, what are you doing? I have a good idea, let's do this. But yeah, I, I didn't sit on a chair and plan this. Just mm. came to my mind. Uh, I, I would like to have uh, more merit on it, but it was just, uh, we got lucky. I'm fascinated by that. I love, I love when that moment of inspiration hits you and something just fully formed appears in your mind. But obviously at the game jam, it was like, here it is, here's, here's to heck with all this wasted time that we just had. Now let's make this new thing that I just thought of. How has God's Will Be Watching changed in the past year though? As you've gone on to flesh it out into this bigger and bigger idea, how has it, you know, warped away from that vision that you had at the beginning? Yeah, mm, I, actually the first, idea was to make just this experience bigger, like the survival experience, but then a lot of gameplays uh, appeared on YouTube. We got to see a lot of people playing the game, mm -hmm. and we got to see how they interacted with the game and what were they expecting when playing the game. And we we focused the development of God's Really Watching in a drastic different direction, and it was like people want to feel 
bad or guilty or wants to take hard decisions. Uh -huh. So we expanded the concept of the game, um, just not limiting it to some linear story or some single scenario like this. And try to, we did a brainstorming of different tough situations like being tortured or a hostage situation or experiment with antidotes with your team or we even thought like some sort of political congress where you have to make decisions, something like that. We had a lot of ideas and then we select the ones who made for a good sci-fi story, mm. put them together and try to develop them a little on, on paper. And the ones who survived that process are no part of God's really watching. And each one of them asks a different question to the player, different ethical questions to the player. Jordi, you said something that again is is just in my own experience, and Jess, I think you'll agree with this, especially in the past couple of years of games that people have really responded to. Uh, but you said people wanted to feel bad. And it's yeah. true, they do. Like, I, I do the exact same thing. I want to play a game like Shadow of the Colossus, even. Yeah. I, I like that feeling of regret, that feeling of, oh my god, what have I done? Why, why do you guys think that people respond to that in a video game? Yeah, I think that actually video games are about experiencing, experimenting things you cannot experience in real life. So, you. It's nice to experience survival, extreme survival, for example. But no, do you want? Do you, you don't want to feel it in real life? So video games are like a gate to these kind of experiences. And also, um, as harsh the situation it is, then the re the reward is greater. Like I spend a lot of bad time. I felt really bad making this, but when the success comes, it's like. Oh yeah, I did it. It's not just like a plain reward, a straightforward reward. It's like I earned this. Mm. I mean, Jess, what do you? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, you... it's. I mean, I'm sure Freud would have a lot to say about how masochistic <laughs> everyone is. Um, but no, it's a gaming is an outlet. Whether you want to enact a fantasy or or something that is real in your life, and you want to kind of approach that in a in an easier way gaming allows you to do that so we all have these thoughts of, of, of surviving in this world you know obviously we're not trapped on an alien planet uh, actually fighting for our lives but we all kind of have these these feelings of of trying to make it and make something of ourselves um, and survive in a way so I think that this gets right to the heart of that to the heart of you know humanity and the human experience and interacting with people especially this game does it so well where you have to make these decisions. Like, I've killed two people in my camp already. I, I didn't even mean to, they just ran away because they couldn't handle it. Um, and that's <laughs> that was my bad. But, um, no, it really gets to the heart of, of human interaction and, uh, and kind of what we want to get out of life, so. Jess, you were saying before that, you know, you haven't been able to get through, you know, this little chunk of the game not perfectly. Yet. You have not been able to do a perfect run. So what are you doing differently now that you haven't done before when you've played through this? Well, something wrong again, apparently, because I've already lost two of them. Um, <laughs> but I'm trying to talk more to people and to keep their morale up, because if you don't talk to people or if you don't allow them to like express their sadness, they will run away. Um, and I've already lost, like, the doctor was the first to run. I didn't feed him one night, and he, uh, so he ran away, <laughs> he went crazy and left. Uh, so I am making sure to feed everyone now, too, but it was a little too late. I already lost the doctor, so. Um, so the, le the lesson up front is people like food. <laughs> and they like to talk. <laughs> yeah. People like chatting and eating, that's... <laughs> See, but like that's that is that is not like a common thought that you need to have in a game. You know, usually <laughs> it's it's where are my supplies? Where is you know the the ammunition I need? Where is the health packs? Not what is the conversation I need to have with the people around me so they don't go mad. Right, and I think the game represents uh, madness pretty well. As my characters start to lose their minds, they start rocking back and forth. Um, 
which is a very evocative image. I mean, it's it's a little kind of that cliche rocking in the corner, but in this scenario, it feels right. Like they're trapped and they can't leave and they're terrified. Um, so so it's it's very, very well done here. And I'm worried about the dog. Should I pet him? Oh man, <laughs> he needs love too. Yeah, actually that was a challenge we wanted to do with God's Holy Watching that was telling the whole situation without any user interface beside the menu you need to interact with the scene. So we didn't want any health bars or indicators or something and we wanted to tell all what is happening through corporal languages and and the situation of the, the, the scene. So it, it's nice but it's been really challenging. It, when you get rid of all the mechanics you are using video games, you just see numbers around you that tells what's happening. And when you get rid of that, it's very difficult to communicate to the player what is happening. And we we had problems, for example, in the first chapter, you have to handle a hostage situation and you have to negotiate with the police and have the hostages uh, don't re rebel against you or don't get in panic. And you have to talk with them or kick them or shoot them to their knees or something like that. And it was really difficult because every player uh, read the scene differently. Like, oh. he's panicking, let's kick him. And I was like, no, don't kick panicking people. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, every player uh, takes different decisions when there is not a number. If they have seen a seven, for example, they will act automatically know what to do. But when they see people shaking, it's like, interpret the scene. Do you, do you decide? People is having fear. It's not a number. So decide what do you want to do with him. So, Jordi, how do you adapt around that behavior? Because I, I admire the compulsion to say, you know what, we don't want meters. We don't want numbers, you know, indicating to people like this is success if you have a yeah. 10 it's success if you have a five it's failure i i like that you try to move away from that because you end up with something that feels very natural but when you see people doing that like they're kicking somebody that's panicking how do you adapt to change it you mean as a developer yeah well i believe that the game makes you better at it as you fail. I mean, the first time you see that kicking a panicking hostages make him run away, the next time you understand that, okay, let's not kick panicking people. Yeah. So every time you fail, you get smarter with the game. Um, so Merrick GR in the chat wants to know, you know, do you ever move out of this environment, this, this lakeside view that we're seeing here? Obviously that hostage scenario that you were describing before, that's yep. probably not taking place here. What are some other, <laughs> what are some other environments that you see over uh, Sergeant Burden's seven-year experience in the game? Okay, you get to see um, this other situation that happens on a space lab. Then you you get to play a torture scenario where you have to endure 20 days of torture and you are in a basement being tortured. And also there is a stage about being trapped in a cave with a deadly virus and you have to develop antidotes, experimental antidotes and inject them to, the, to your partners and see what happens, human experimentation. Um, there are more things, but they're spoilers, so... <laughs> <laughs> so you, like, uh, the game deals with torture directly, like you're being tortured like in different ways over those 20 days? Or... Yeah, you, you have to endure 20 days of torture and the violence keeps getting in, more intense as you play. You have, for example, a first punching, but then being hit with a hammer or pull, pulling your teeth out or melting iron to your to your body. There are oh. several, a lot of things. Or maybe uh, a Russian roulette. That, that, that... Yeah. That thing was really enjoyed. We presented the, the game at, at PAX and people got to play the torture scene. And when the Russian roulette came, it was like a lot of people watching the screen like, oh my God, oh my God, he's going to do it. And the tension before the click or the shoot was was really great. And um, yeah, but you have different things. Maybe the torturer uh, grabs your partner's arm and he, he threatens with cutting his arm off with an ax 
and you have to answer and decide if the your life is worth an arm or not. A lot of questions different in, in every scenario. A lot of deep questions, man. <laughs> yeah, Jordy, I, I mean, like those are brutal scenarios, just brutal. Has Was there ever a moment where you guys were going to put something in the game that you thought to yourself, too much, that's too much, we can't do it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, um, what, can we hear some of those? We gotta know now, we gotta we, know. We were actually going to do it, but the Volver Digital hold or or doing because it, it was this is too much, and I'm not going to give details, but I will say it involved a baby. Ooh. Oh God! Okay. Oh my. <laughs> That's fine. <Yeah. laughs> my oh. imagination is working overtime on that one. Oh. <laughs> um, Jordy, we talked about this a little bit at the top of the stream. This is the PC version of Gods Will Be Watching. Will it be available on Steam? Where will people be able to get the game when it's done in June? The game is coming out for PC, Mac, and Linux, and it's going to be available on Steam, Google Games, and Humble Store. Uh, it's interesting to me that it'll be on good old games, because in a certain way, Gods Will Be Watching does look like a classic Sierra game. It looks like you know, King's Quest VI and yeah. and Space Quest. Why did you guys decide? Uh, who who just asked this in the chat? Yeah, Merrick Gr asked again. Uh, where where did the graphic style come from? Why did you guys want to do this sort of classic pixel adventure look? Well, we were working with Pixel Art for two years because we have three artists on the team and every artist has a really different drawing style so going with illustration it's very difficult but pixel art is like unifies all the styles of our of our artist art team but also about this characteristic style of these long characters it's because we wanted to tell a lot with corporate expressions so tiny characters wouldn't work here as the usual characters in video games so we need these tall characters with these strange uh, limbs and the legs and the arms to express a lot with their body. Mm. Uh, I, it's funny. I, I really love. I really love the look. I mean, this this goes back to the games that I played when I was, you know, a boy. Uh, quick little side story: the first PC game I ever played at the ripe old age of six was Leisure Suit Larry, <laughs> and. It that explains my... so much. Uh, yeah, it's, it really, that, that tells you a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, my, my aunt decided it was going to be really funny to teach her six-year-old nephew how to play PC games by teaching him to play Leisure Suit Larry. <laughs> um, but, it, you know, it's funny, when I go back now and I play Leisure Suit Larry, I could beat it when I was six, and I can't do it now because it's like I've forgotten everything, I need to use a fact because everything is so counterintuitive. And I'm curious, Jordy, how do you go about making like a classically styled adventure game that doesn't have any of the drawbacks of those old games where like they feel illogical? Like how do you, <laughs> how do you make all of the choices that you're making in this, all the things that you need to do feel you know, like something a person would actually think of. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I think it's because of the game per se, because it is a point and click, but it's not a bento. So we call it a point and click thriller because of that, because it's not a, not about solving logical puzzles like using the key with the monkey and getting the banana and something like that. It's just a game about making decisions. So. It, felt, it feels more logical, just assessing the situation and taking a decision. And usually, most of the decisions are wrong, but you can make for that wrong decisions, making sacrifices. Jess, what are you doing differently this time through? Okay, so this time I've only lost one person so far. Um, and I, I lost Donald, who was trying to fix the radio. 
Uh, but luckily we have the robot, the robot butler guy who looks so fancy in the corner. He's fixing the radio <laughs> still. Um, this time I am trying to focus on keeping everyone warm because they died last time because I let the fire go out. <laughs> um, and that was silly. And then I'm focusing on getting food as well and actually cooking it. I haven't seen what happens if you feed everyone raw food the entire time, but I assume it's not good. Um, so we'll see. It's it's not bad, but it's less good. It's less good. Okay, so it's not too yeah. bad though. All right, we'll see. Oh, see, and now I'm making. Uh, I'm gonna make the doctor make uh, medicine overnight, and I took a chance with that. We'll see how that turns out. For everyone just joining us uh, right here in the middle of today's stream, you are watching Gods Will Be Watching by Deconstruct Team. And uh, Jordi DePaca from Deconstruct Team is joining us here today. My name is Anthony John Agnello. And uh, Jess Condit of Joystick is playing Gods Will Be Watching right now. Uh, we've already been through once and almost everyone died. Jess killed a lot of people. <laughs> well, no, Jess actually made a lot of people go nuts. That's what happened, right? What was that? Sorry. <laughs> I, said, I said you made a lot of people go crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was awful. Every Everyone went crazy and left. Oh, dang it. Oh, you'll see in a second. Oh, man. Yeah. 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 Did you, so did you see that coming, Jordy? Like, while you're watching me play, do you see yeah. the mistakes I'm making? Yeah, yeah. I, oh. I was thinking about that right now dang it <laughs> oh i was a little too late with the with the wood here and fades to black and i lost <laughs> there it is <laughs> all right so wait like here are the stats that hey, we're we're there's always a little bit of a delay so we're seeing stuff that jess has already seen uh you didn't kill anybody was one of your stats that's progress jess that's well good. they ran away because they went crazy <laughs> <laughs> they could be dead i just don't know <laughs> just not sure. Have you tried to go for a swim? It's, it's a little not, chilly. It might be a little chilly. Maybe. You know, I, like, look, nothing boosts morale like a polar bear club. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll try that. No. Jordy, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that you guys need to build in a polar bear club option in that <laughs> game. Maybe, oh, man. maybe yeah. possible. We'll okay. think about that. Okay, hey, Jordy. So so I'm starting this new round. Are there any tips you can give me? Yeah, for, I, I can a yeah. uh, pro tip with uh, the fireplace. You don't have to wait until it runs out. You can add wood with, uh, before it runs out of power. Aha. That so is you genius. don't spend so much time feeding the fire. Okay, see, I just forget that I have to keep lighting the fire until it goes out. But I do notice it gets smaller. Um, as the yeah, it gets smaller. Yeah. yeah. So I, I just need to be more aware of the fire, I think. Exactly. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah, there are a lot of things to be aware in the puzzle. That's the first challenge. Okay. Yeah, and the fire is the one, like, I'll forget about because I'm so worried about all these people and even the dog and the robot. And then it's like, oh, man, we're going to die because of this freaking fire. <laughs> like, my bad. Sorry, guys. I was too busy preparing your medicine, getting your food, repairing your radio, trying to keep your morale up. I'm only one man! <laughs> yeah, Jess, why don't you run away? Just like, is that an option? Can Sergeant Burton be like, I'm done with you people? <laughs> he should be. Well, you, you can kill everybody for food, but then he feels sorry and commits suicide. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> and I do love on the on the screen after you've after you've basically lost the game, it says your actions have been foolish. It's like, oh thanks. I didn't <laughs> know that already by losing. <laughs> Just a little kick in the gut. Yeah, I think if you let the fire run out, it uh, increases a lot of possibilities of getting the foolish rank. Okay. So what are the other ranks? Because I think I've only gotten foolish to be honest. You have I mean I believe crew, and okay. uh, I actually don't remember what a poor developer. But cool, <laughs> that's a good example of how it would yeah, go. That's the one I get always, so I don't know. Oh man. <laughs> no, no, I, there are other ones that are, are good. 
but I don't remember them now. Too much work. Of course. Jordy, you know, Gods Will Be Watching really strikes me as a game that you want to be playing by yourself in a dark room. You know, with, like, nothing but the glow of your computer monitor in front of you. But, at the same time, it, it's, like, even now, you know, the three of us are talking, and I, I'm i still looking at some of these choices that Jess makes, and it, like, it, I get uncomfortable. It gets to me. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm curious how people react in mass. You were talking about bringing the game to PAX East. Yeah. And actually having like a crowd around the demo and having people being like, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty nice to see because a lot of people didn't want to actually play, but they just wanted to watch. And it was nice to see a lot of people around the game with their hands over their mouth, or <laughs> looking at the screen like, oh, oh no, oh no. <laughs> but yeah, when somebody beat the puzzle, it was like everybody clapping and a big applause, so it was pretty epic when someone completed the puzzle. It was a nice experience. Uh, a quick question from the crowd, a serious, a serious 654 again. If you kill someone, can you eat them? Yes, that's one of the best ways to survive. So I should yeah. kill someone? Ooh, who should I kill? That's my question now. Hmm. I can't, okay, so, but I can't kill myself. But, oh, you can eat the dog, can't you? Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> awful. But it's the most yeah. logical choice. Yeah, actually we love the conversations on the internet when the original prototype came out. It was a lot of internet post forums, like how to beat God really watching. And it was like, on the first day, you have to kill the dog. <laughs> and immediately, <laughs> immediately, a lot of people came like, how do you dare? You don't have feelings, don't kill the dog. And it, it was amazing to discover some people that, who prefer to kill the engineer before the dog. I'm considering it's... that, honestly. Like I'm hovering yeah, I... over pet, hunt or kill Marvin the dog. <laughs> He has a name! Oh, man. Yeah. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna kill him. So, Void Fox here oh. in the chat is asking, how's the replayability of the game? Is there anything stopping you from finding the perfect strategy? Jess is murdering a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, how... How can you? Oh my God! Its head just explodes. Yeah. Oh God. I am that a good is... leader. You're welcome. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, it's actually uh, plenty of food for the team, so it's not a bad decision. But all the game, you can beat all the game without killing anyone, but that's really difficult. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. How? It, you know, it, Jordy. You. You clearly want people to feel certain things in Gods Will Be Watching. You want them yeah. to have these extreme reactions. Is keeping everyone alive the ideal version of the game? Like, do you do you consider that to be a perfect run if everyone lives? Or is that like you're not getting the full Gods Will Be Watching experience? I mean, the game is about Actually, it doesn't give you a verdict uh, like this was the perfect ending or you did 100%. It's not, there's no something like that. It's just about finding a, a solution that fits you, that you feel right with it. So if you feel that a dog is, the dog's life is worth the life of the whole team, it's, it's okay. It's, that's the way you have to play it. But yes, for myself, I consider it that the best ending is to have everybody alive. But that's the most difficult part of the, the game. Yeah. Hey Jess, how are you feeling about your decisions in life? I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's at least the dog corpse is gone now. Um, yeah, the, the dog corpse does disappear after you shoot it, thankfully. While everyone is enjoying their their Eating their dog it. their dog meat. It's a hot dog. Oh, if I cook it. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <sighs> okay. So so far it feels like I've had enough food the whole time. It's like the hardest part for me is really keeping everyone sane. 
Like, that's yeah. very difficult. Did, did you try giving speeches during night? Oh, that's right. I, oh, I don't think I have enough time to do a speech this time. Speeches are pretty powerful. Okay. okay. Well, that, just next time, you just start and you kill the dog first thing, and then you go into your speeches. <laughs> I mean, I can do that. Is that the kind of leader I want to be, though? All these questions I have to ask myself. And the engineer ran away anyway. I should have just killed him. He loved dogs. I love dogs. <laughs> he was an extra in that movie, Must Love Dogs. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's sure, not. That's sure. not true. I don't that's think so. aw yeah. awful. Awful. I don't even know why I said that. Now, I just, <laughs> now I'm just embarrassed. Uh, Jordy, I am curious about one thing. You know, we were yeah. talking before about, like, the fact that there was almost a scenario with a baby, but no, yeah. you decided not to put it in. Is there anything that you guys wanted to put in the game, but it just didn't work? Were there any scenarios that you came up with that you were like, this is going to be great, and it just, for one reason or another, didn't work out? Yeah, uh, I mentioned that, like, political meeting where we wanted to uh, make a scene where you are on a meeting where you don't actually see directly the consequences of your decisions, but it was like some major decision taking, like the decisions you will make in this political meeting will affect like a whole planet or a whole civilization, that kind of responsibility. Mm. But it didn't work so well because you didn't see directly the, the result of your actions. It's like, okay, I just killed uh, 5,000 people, or it just, it feels like 4 billion people is just a an statistic, and one friend is more difficult to kill, a dog is more difficult to kill than, I don't know, it didn't work the same way, it didn't feel like the same way, it was like just playing in a strategy game and see like, oh, we lost this country, but it didn't feel like a human. It's really, it's interesting that you really need to strike this balance between, you have to come up with these things that are going to have a visual effect. Like people need to see the consequences of their action and not just like, not just have it bear out in the dialogue. I mean, how do you, I, this is an odd question, how do you sort of strike that balance with having what these characters say seem har as horrifying as you know the visual of the dog's head exploding like that dog's head exploding that is upsetting that is deeply upsetting but you also want to have the moment where one of these characters says something to you and that's equally upsetting how do you do that well i, I don't know it's just i i thought a lot of them. Actually, the game is more intense if you play it from the beginning because you, close, you get to know your team and what they dream of or all his backstory and you evolve with them. So it's a lot more difficult when they feel alive, like they're not just giving you tips like take this ammunition to take that big guy and they just talk to you about, yeah, when I go back I want to see my mom and do this and I don't know. So I try to make them feel alive, and then it feels more powerful dialogue and the, all the decisions. Oof. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, how do you decide, I mean, which violence is gratuitous? Like, the baby thing, obviously that was too much, but like, is there a point to the rest of this, this kind of inhumanity in the game? Yeah, I mean, you don't have to do it if you don't want, but maybe that's not the the correct choice. I mean, I want to be good and don't kill anybody, but maybe being good means that you're going to actually kill everybody. Right. So we didn't put any gratuitous violence, just like, let's kill him and have fun. Every, every death has benefits to you, like in the hostage situation, you can execute one hostage to keep the situation under control, but it's it's up to you. It's um, I don't know. Maybe in that part it has different connotations because it's not a friend. It's just it's just a meme. But 
knowing that you can solve all the situation without anybody dying, it's, it's just, I, no, I don't know. Actually, the game becomes a lot more easier if you don't have feelings. It's like, this is just a resource. Let's use it. Bam. I don't know. <laughs> and like, just, I was. But, not, to, not to interrupt, but Please. are your dogs barking? Yes, I was just gonna say, my Wait, dogs I, just got fed up with all my dog murder, and they barked every, at me. Everybody in the chat is actively being like, what is that sound? That was my dog. And that, that is Jess's <laughs> dogs protesting the vicious murder of Marvin the dog. Seriously, they just, they got up off the couch, sit, they sat right next to me and barked at me, and now they're back on the couch. That was a protest. I'm sorry, puppies. I didn't mean it. <laughs> oh well. Do you know you can use the robot for tracking the moral status of the team? I did know that, and I forgot I could do that. Okay. True. Let yeah, me, it's, okay. it's pretty useful, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, for, I for, see there are so many like little layers to this section, like, you know, staying <laughs> warm with the fire. But uh, yeah, I'll have to do that next next round. If everyone survives the night, we'll see. I have faith. Also, there's a thing I'm, I'm seeing when people play. A lot of content we create for the game, yeah, is just it is just not seen because most of the players try to be good or be be just. But there is content like if you kill uh, Sarah or the engineer, they are married to each other, uh -huh. so they miss them. If you kill someone, it affects the morale of the of his partner. Everyone is related with one another in different intensities. And if you kill someone that is really close to one of them, they start to talk about them. And there's a lot of content of the game we wrote about the plot and the backstory. You don't get to see it if you don't kill someone or make something bad. But, well, I, I expect that when the game came, came out, a lot of psychopaths will reveal that content. Of course. <laughs> it is kind of fun to play as a psychopath um, in yeah. some instances. This one, though, like, man, I didn't want to shoot that dog. I really wish I had shot the engineer. Like, that's going to haunt me tonight, but that's okay. Um, you, would rather, you would rather eat people than dog? Is that what you're saying? Well... <laughs> the difficult questions raised by gods will be watching. Right, seriously. Well, actually, the engineer has a lot of meat, and the dog doesn't. So it's better to kill him if you don't feel exactly. like that. Is, that yeah, it's that, pretty fat, the guy. That makes sense to me. <laughs> it does. I, and I keep, so, I keep forgetting I have to repair the radio too. All these little levels. Oh man. Yeah, even if you survive, if you don't have the radio, you are going to die. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Jordy, you know you, I. You're talking about all of the things that most people just won't see when yeah. when they play. How how do you prioritize what's going to get built? You know, if you have these options for your characters, and you think to yourself, "Well, this is super interesting, and we really want it in there," but we've also been seeing the way people play, and the way people play means that you know this is going to be hidden. Like, how do you sort of make your choices about what gets put in and what gets cut when you're going through the development process? Well, <clears throat> this game has one thing that it's more difficult to design than to develop since it's just single shot scenarios. So we put a really great effort on the backstory of the game. So we didn't cut at any part. All the decisions have deep uh, story rewards because we didn't we didn't want to any decision felt empty like oh it wasn't to do, I wasn't supposed to do that so it doesn't have any deeper consequences but since we have the resources to make this uh, these scenarios are easy to fill with a lot of content it was just why not let's put a lot of of different content and if you see it you maybe feel special playing like oh they think they they thought about me and they wanted to add something to my decision, not just, I kill him, I have food. No, you kill him, you have food, but someone gets depressed and he's still talking about him. So, yeah, it has maybe too much, too much content where we are getting a lot of hard, a hard time localizing with the localization of the game because 
uh, when we work with the team, it's like, yes, this really happens in the game. I, I didn't know that. And yeah, there are a lot of hidden content here. And maybe a lot of will be unseen, but I trust that when the game comes out, a lot of this content will will be pop will pop out. Mm. I guarantee that will happen. The internet will yeah. find it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Actually, we'll, we are including a statistic system in the game. When you beat every puzzle, you get to see your solution, and then you can compare yourself to the rest of the world, and you get statistics like 60% uh, of the people sacrifice the engineer. And I think it's going to be interesting, even as a developer, to see how the whole community of the game interacted with it and where was the the most taken decisions and the 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 way people most play the game. I love that aspect where you can see all the decisions from around the world. Yeah, I like that always adds such a weird layer to your experience of the game because you have this personal reaction to what you've just done. And then, you know, when I played through The Walking Dead, uh, Telltale Games is Walking Dead game, I, I, every single time I saw all of those stats at the end, all I could think was, really? I, like, only 13% of people <laughs> made this choice? How could people not make this choice? Right? <laughs> Jordy, do you already have access to those metrics of the way people have been playing this build? Mm, nope, it's not the statistics system is not running yet. We're going to launch it with the with the game, so it's going to be we're going to discover it together. There's no only two percent of people kill the dog, Jess. <laughs> right? That's <laughs> See, but then you just saw I lost, and now I have to decide whether to kill the dog in the beginning. And guess what I'm going to do? No! Oh, God. Just wait for it. Just wait for it. <sighs> yep, I'm an awful person. I get, I get over things quickly, I learned today. <laughs> Pretty heartless. Jordy, yes, how, how long will Gods Will Be Watching be when it's all done? Like a complete playthrough. Yeah. Well, it it will have six different chapters. It has six chapters with a puzzle, each of them, and they are all connected with cinematic sequences. Mm. And from I saw from the testing, a regular player takes about two or three hours to complete each puzzle. So yeah, maybe ten hours, fifteen hours. I don't know. It really depends on each player because. We saw some geniuses completing its chapter in just the first attempt, and it was like, you are a genius, I can even complete the first attempt myself. Mm. So if some genius come, maybe in just two hours we'll complete the game, but normally it will take you about that two or three hours per puzzle. Wow. Um, what are the cinematic scenes going to be like? They. We use them to connect every scenario because they are just single shot scenarios. We didn't want to jump from one to another uh, with empty things or just text. And you get to see what happens. Like when you survive the torture scenario, you get to see how do you go back to your headquarters and you get the brief for the next uh, mission and you arrive to the planet. and. There is a lot of backstory in that cinematics. There, there are some with mini games, even like, for example, a scene when you are playing with Marvin, uh, you are playing fetch, and it's time you decide to toss the, the stick, the characters speak with them. And when the player, when the dog comes back with the stick, you get to decide another time if you want to launch it again or go back to the mission. So as long as you keep tossing the stick, you get to know more backstory of the game. Mm. There are some kind of, that kind of cinematic sequences. Jess, how, how much are you looking forward to the fact that now you can play fetch with Marvin? That just broke my heart. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. Yeah. I want, I want that statistic at the end of every chapter. Your heart was broken. 16 <laughs> times. You cried 64 tears. <laughs> I did. How'd you know? Good job. 83% of people that played <laughs> Chapter 4 cried 87 tears. 
Oh. <laughs> Pardon me. So, Jess, what, like, of the, the of the playthroughs you have done today, mm -hmm. what do you consider to be your most successful run so far? Like, like ignoring the stats at the end with sure. survival, like, what, like, what did you feel like I did the best I could? Um, you know, honestly, this one is feeling a little better, but I started it by killing a dog, so I don't want to say it's my best run. Right. Um, but honestly, yeah, I mean, just the fact that I've kind of, I'm kind of getting into a groove. I know where I need to be a little more careful. Um, this one's feeling okay. I'm giving a pep talk already. We're going to save the world, team. And I think that's a good idea. So we'll see. I have to, I have to cut things off before they get bad. Like I have to put uh, wood on the fire before it actually goes out. I have to stop people going crazy before they actually start rocking back and forth. Yeah, um, you're getting it. Yeah, see, okay, so there we go. <laughs> yes, I'm getting it, he says. But then I also have to kill a dog, so that's awful. <laughs> but oh well. Uh, Jordy, I like that the game seems to rub it in people's faces. Like, that, like when you make a difficult decision, the visual cue that follows is, look at the horrible thing you just did. Yep. Like, it, yep. it makes that very, very clear. Oh, man. This it is does. tough. <laughs> oh, man, see, and now, okay. I'm trying my best, and still I'm getting people uh, you'll see in a second on the screen. They're not feeling so hot. <sighs> okay, let's see. What can I do? I gave you a pep talk. What else do you want from me, Sarah? <laughs> Single yeah. loving it said in the chat, with a name like Sergeant Burden, what could go wrong? <laughs> I know. <laughs> It, and it also does sound like Tyler Durden. It from really Fight does. Club, which which doesn't help the psychopath angle <laughs> much. Oh. All right, let's get started. Yeah, there are good times and bad times to give speeches to. I mean, if you just killed someone, it's not a good idea to talk about saving the world. It's like uh... you have to choose the the good moments. It's, for example, if. They just, they, you have plenty of food and you give a pet talk about starving, it's like ruining, ruining the morale. And they say that to you. There is a lot of content also on the speeches and the reactions of, to, of them. And for example, that is one of the contents of the game you are going to see. Mm -hmm. Also, there are funny ones. Like if you already repair the radio, but if you give a pet talk about repairing the radio, they're just like, what the fuck, you're crazy? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. That's well, okay, there that's are cool. there are just a few minutes left here on joystick streams on this Tuesday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Um so Gods will be watching will be out in June. Is there a specific date, Jordy? Um as late as we can in June because we still have a lot of things to do. So maybe 30 <laughs> of June. <laughs> At the end of the month in June is when... The, June... the last minute of June. <laughs> the, the very last <laughs> minute of June. <laughs> and, like, right as like, you see July sneaking up behind Marvin to kill it, yeah. that's when it will come out in June. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jordy, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank this you. Is great. And Jess, how are, you, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm just killing everyone now. <laughs> so, and Jess yeah. is just watching the world burn uh, here uh, at the uh, end of everything. Just like the Look gods are. Food. You have a lot of food now. I it's do. <laughs> uh, and Jess is just going to turn that robot into a boat. And oh my god, the robot just <laughs> split in half. That was nasty. Uh, if you guys want to know gods will be watching, you can go to the game's website at godswillbewatching.com. Uh, this is just a portion of the sixth chapter game. This is based on the fourth chapter. Uh, and like we just said, it will be out at the end of June, the very last minute of June. <laughs> uh, if you guys want to know more about what Deconstruct Team is up to, follow them on Twitter. That's twitter.com slash deconstructteam. And if you have enjoyed yourself with us today, keep in mind that Joystick Streams does this every week, twice a week. 
We're going to be back on Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we're going to be playing A Little Child of Light, the new uh, two-dimensional role-playing game by Ubisoft and the team behind Far Cry 3, actually. Uh, Far Cry 3, an insane game about insane people murdering each other in the jungle, and then the crew turned around and made a game about a poem and a little girl embracing her destiny in a watercolor world, and that's really cool that that happened. <laughs> so we're going to be doing that then. Uh, we are also going to be giving away about 15 codes for Child of Light on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, and PC. So if you want to get your hands on those, please come on down. And uh, yeah, go to joystick.com and enjoy all of the many things that we do there because it's all awesome. Uh, also, uh, you can follow us on Twitter. That's twitter.com slash joystick. You can find us on Facebook. Just search for joystick with a Q. And if you're the per kind of person that likes Google+, Plus, we're on there as well. And who are you? And what are you doing? That's a mystery <laughs> to all of us. Uh, again, Joystick Streams airs every single Tuesday and Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for coming, everybody. Thank you again, Jordy. This was really awesome. Thank you. And thank you, Jess, for shooting a dog in the face. <laughs> anytime. Anytime. Goodbye, everyone. We'll Bye. see you on Thursday. <laughs>